And he's also a marvelous musician. I've actually been to some of Tommy's concerts that have just kind of pulled together with all his musician friends, and he is, he's marvelous. But back in the day, he was with a group called, called um, Riders of the Sky. Does that mean anything to y'all? I mean, is that a well-known group? I guess his sister can tell us in a minute. <laughs> but he was known as Tumbleweed Tommy. And he also is was with a group, and I think evidently still is. It's got something that's kind of got resurrected called the Contenders. And the reason he can't be here today is because he's in Austin, Texas right now working on a remix of a Contenders, contenders album. So he, he does, you know, he's a very diversified fellow. He's an interesting character. Tell us it's a Catherine. So here to accept the award for Tommy today is his, is his sister Catherine. And also, Rose Hoven, who's founder and editor of North Carolina Health News. So, ladies, But I'm pleased that he asked me to um, be here to tell you how much he appreciates this signal honor the North Carolina Council on Aging Champion for Aging Award. And most importantly, how much he appreciates all the work that you all do for the aging population. He understands that the real champions are from the nonprofit organizations like the Council the Friends of Residents, um, AARP, and those of you from government and uh, business circles who tackle issues for older people daily in their work. As a journalist, he does not identify himself as an advocate, like many of you all are. But just as a reporter, who persistently reaches, researches and presents the facts about older people in North Carolina. But as um, Bob Blanco just said, um, advocating involves educating and informing um, to elevate the issue. So I think I will let Tommy know he can't consider himself, even though a journalist and advocate. <laughs> Um, he strives to write news stories that might help readers understand the situation of the um, older, the 1.8 billion older people, persons in the state. He wants me to be sure to point out that these stories were all made possible through the support and wise counsel of um, Rose Hoban and the North Carolina Health News, and she's here today as well as well as the News and Observer, and for a year at the Indy. He asked me to express his deep appreciation to them as well. Finally, he'd like me to mention that he and our older sister, Lynn, and I learned how to honor older people right here in Raleigh from our parents, Richard and Mary Goldsmith. Mostly by example, they taught us to respect and celebrate older people, by tending to their needs, always listening to their stories, especially our dad's repeated stories, and making sure <laughs> our elders know that they are highly valuable, valuable and respected members of, his, of this society. And on his behalf, many thanks. And on a personal note, I'd like to say thanks too for all the advocacy for Medicaid expansion. A couple of years ago, I retired from the state office of Medicaid um, Behavioral Health, where I worked. I was the manager of children's behavioral health um, uh, programs in the um, state office, and I'm so pleased and I appreciated your insights this morning on what happened there with the expansion of behavioral health services. So we're a little bit on different ends of the continuum, but I think we all, and in the expansion of Medicaid, is going to benefit a lot of people. So thank you very much. Hi, folks. Um, 
So it was, it's been my pleasure and sometimes my frustration to uh, have had Tommy working with me for the past few years. <laughs> we know Tommy. Um, uh, no, but he's, he, I've always loved the fact that he would introduce himself as the aging reporter and then he'd say, and I'm also old. <laughs> um, but he, like, like with his sister, Tommy asked me to be sure that I made remarks about this honor, that when I made remarks, that, that I make the point that he was not an advocate. He's right, um, done, journal, done right, journalism elevates the concerns of everyday people to those who are in power and we're the eyes and the ears for those people who are not in power and the folks who are readers and listeners and viewers. And we're also tasked with keeping people in power in check and reminding them of their obligations to the people we serve. You know, I just, um, with uh, Representative White, I just came from several weeks of being up close and personal with the powerful as they worked on the state budget, a document that some of you are deeply concerned with. I have to say that Tommy's stories about people who have very little power, who live in nursing homes and adult care homes, who have ended up having to sell sex so they can buy a, themselves a Coke or a new pair of underwear, has helped translate into increased personal care allowances for people, first in adult care homes in the last Biennium's budget, and just today will translate into increased personal care allowances for people in nursing homes. I had never even heard of this issue until I met Tommy. I remember one time he did a story and he had, was looking at a database and there was a younger reporter sitting next to me in the press room and she said, oh, I should have done that story. And I thought to myself, oh sister, you didn't even know that database existed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I also sat through committee hearings this year where there were maybe one or two journalists in the room and I've worked for the past decade watching the diminishment of journalism in the state and the country. I'd argue that the secrecy and some of the abuses of power that we witnessed in the past couple of weeks were in large part because there were not enough of us to out there keeping our elected leaders on this by crawling all over what they were doing and saying, sorry, Representative White. Um, <laughs> actually, I don't need to crawl all over her. She's always very um, responsive to me. Um, so perhaps I'm going to be a little self-serving here, but if you're not paying attention, or if you're not, excuse me, if you're not paying for journalism, you consume, you need to. We need people like Tommy, dogged, irascible, defatigable in representing his readers. But we can only have them if they can make a decent living. We as a state were lucky to have Tommy working during a time when his doggedness was supported by a media company of some sort. Um, but I fear we won't see the likes of Tommy again for some time. So I'm sorry to sound a downer note, but we'll say there are some glimmers of hope with new funding for journalism, but we also need people who care and who are engaged, like the folks in this room, to support the Tommies of the future. So thank you. So we just have this little plaque and another little thing in the bag for Tommy, but we thought as a reporter, just have a little in him. I'm sure he doesn't have one, right? <laughs> but anyway, Catherine, thank you very much, and we'll get this to you to see if he gets it. Okay.